There are many pieces to the cancer puzzle. Each patient we see has a unique and distinct puzzle. These pieces of the puzzle include lots of things. They include patient history, family history, whether or not there's a clear understanding of the diagnosis. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, a real strength of our practice is our ability and our desire to put all the pieces of your puzzle together. We bring the whole picture together, and for you, this picture will be clear and will be in focus. Our board certified oncologists and our oncology trained support staff, including our physicists, our nurses, our social workers, and our dietitians, are all here to put this puzzle together. We all work towards your cancer treatment plan to put you on the path to wellness. At the Ackerman Cancer Center, we're committed to taking patients from diagnosis to survivorship. We are here to provide high quality, state of the art, focused radiation treatment for our cancer patients. Radiation therapy is the use of ionizing radiation to control the abnormal growth of cells, whether they're malignant or benign. Radiation works against cancer by two methods. Physically, it goes in and attacks the cells directly. Each cell is like a small factory. You have this conveyor belt, which is really the DNA. So the radiation goes in and will actually blow holes in that conveyor belt, making that cell inactive. A second way that it works is chemically. Radiation goes in and interrupts the chemical bonds in water and oxygen. Some patients will come and see me and they only need to have surgery or they need to have surgery and chemotherapy or sometimes they'll need all three or sometimes radiation therapy alone. How it's sequenced depends on the kind of a malignancy. So what is brachytherapy? Brachytherapy is a term that is unfamiliar to most of us today. Brachy means short. And so brachytherapy is radiation therapy that emanates just a small distance out. Surgeons who go in and do a lumpectomy in women learn that we can actually put the radiation therapy in the tumor bed where the tumor was located. Because we know at the edges of where that tumor was, maybe there's a few cancer cells still sitting close to that edge. And so he inserts a balloon into that cavity and that, that balloon is blown up. And then what we do is take a radiation seed that goes inside through the tube. Inside of that balloon, the radiation never touches the person. And then the radiation then emanates out from this small seed, the size of a grain of rice, to radiate those nearby tissues. And then that avoids radiation to all the other normal structures, giving you high doses of radiation to the tumor and low doses to the rest of the patient. When we first meet a patient for consultation, a number of things happen. First, the patient and their family meets with one of our oncology certified nurses. The nurse finds out about the patient's past medical history, medications, and the nurse also provides some education about the process of cancer treatment. The patient and their family then meet with one of our physicians. Our role as physicians is to better understand your cancer diagnosis. Generally, we call up right in front of our patients the other physicians that are involved in the patient's care, and we work to lead a collaborative team of other physicians and ourselves in providing the best care for our patients. Simulation is the first step in the complete planning process for the patient's unique radiation treatment that they're gonna receive. It's where the initial CAT scan is done so we can have images of the part of the body that's gonna be receiving the radiation, where the initial marks are placed on the patient to help for reproducibility on a daily basis. I'm gonna bring you into the room where the CAT scan machine is, and we will we'll position you on the table and how you're gonna be receiving your treatments. Your treatments won't be in this room, but we call it a simulation because we're simulating how you receive your radiation treatments. We recommend patients wear comfortable clothing, typically like a button-up, where it can just open that way they don't have to change. The physicist will come in and take some measurements where he sticks a wire through the center catheter that's placed in your breast, but you don't feel anything. And we do the CAT scan, which you won't feel anything. It makes a little bit of noise, um, but that's it. And after the CAT scan's over, you will be remaining in that same position and 
as still as you can because the images have been sent to our physics department. The physician and the physicist, they use the CAT scan with the dummy wire um, and that's placed in the catheter in order to do the treatment plan and to tell where the radiation should go. All of that happens during the simulation. Medical physicists is used in radiation therapy to handle and be in control of all of the technical aspects of the treatment of radiation to patients. We're involved with the radiation protection to the staff, the patients, the patient's families, anyone that comes into this facility. A medical dosimetrist is a healthcare professional who is trained in the different modalities of radiation treatment planning. Kind of like a special effects artist that in a 3D movie that takes the physician's vision for each patient's treatment plan and brings it to life and makes it a reality. Everything is customized for that patient. There is nothing that's done stock. We design everything specifically for them. We use almost any imaging modality and we have great treatment planning computers that will utilize and fuse all those images together to give us the best idea of what's inside the patient and how we can create a plan to not only protect the patient, but to treat with a therapeutic dose. Each of the treatment plans that are created are extremely complex. So we have backup programs that double check the time for each of the treatments. We oversee the inclusion of that into the patient's plan. We have to have an accurate determination of what is delivered by other means. And that's where the physicist and the equipment that we have at our disposal becomes important. During a mammostat treatment, we bring you in the room, we lie you on the table, we connect the catheter, the mammostat catheter that's coming from you to the catheter that's coming out of our machine. From then we have a business come in and they check the setup and then we step out of the room. We can see you and hear you from outside of the room and your treatment usually takes about eight minutes. You won't feel anything. You'll hear the machine clicking just a little bit. Other than that, your job's just to hold still. After you've completed all your treatments, with the mammoth side, we take you directly up to an exam room and the doctor removes the bullying in the office. You'll have a total of 10 treatments. You'll come twice a day for five days. Each treatment will take probably about eight to 10 minutes. You have nothing to fear. The nurses here at Ackerman Cancer Center are here to assist you and make sure your experience during treatment is the best possible that it can be. So it's important if you are experiencing any changes or have questions or concerns that you let a nurse know right away so we can make sure we're effectively managing those concerns. We're here as much as you need. Here at the Ackerman Cancer Center, we have a whole host of support services for our patients. It really is one of the strengths of our practice. I have found that support services are very integral to the delivery of cancer care for our patients. The services that our nurses, social workers, and dietitians provide improves the quality of life for our patients through treatment. An oncology social worker is here to provide cancer patients with psychosocial services and various resources within the community, um, nationally, internationally, for anything that they may find that they need throughout their treatment. I meet with every new patient who comes in and am able to assess and then tailor what needs to be done and what resources each individual needs after meeting with them. Here we navigate our patients from initial consult all the way through treatment, and this allows us to ensure that the burden is taken off of them. This also allows us to help them transition into survivorship once they've completed treatment. The services that we provide depends on the nutritional status in patient. The first step is to performance a malnutrition risk screening. If the patient doesn't eat well, he receives recipes, general recommendations, and tips to improve his clinical condition and his quality of life. I am available before, during, and after treatment to help patient and family to cope with radiation therapy and the secondary effects. My role as financial resource coordinator is twofold, basically. That is financially and uh, their insurance, particular plan that they may have. It is very overwhelming because the word copay, the word deductible, the word out of pocket is very confusing and complex to some. So 
I can reassure them, no matter what, we will work through this with you. We're here to be resourceful and compassionate at the same time. I have the capability of reviewing each and every insurance plan with them. I'm here to assist you, to walk with you, to hold your hand and accommodate you the best way that I can. And you will be taken care of. Patients are concerned about follow-up care. Once treatments are complete, what happens next? We are always here for you. Well, we will schedule follow-up appointments as deemed necessary. We will never lose sight of you or your process of recovery. The Ackerman Cancer Center team understands that your cancer puzzle can shift, sometimes in subtle and other times in significant ways. We will ensure that you are appropriately monitored after your cancer care.